All right, guys, we're going to start our video for tonight. But before we do this, we're going to interrupt some people taking the test, and we're going to see if Zara wants to give a shout out. So you have to talk pretty loud, but do you want to say anything, Zara? <laughs> she said she wanted to give a shout out, but now she froze up. Anybody else? Hi. That was Lisa. Our heart is quiet. Sad. Okay. Okay, anyway, I'll stop that. Um, this is probably the most intense error statement that we'll have to deal with. The integral test and the alternating series error don't, aren't, aren't as formal as this, but this is a little more powerful, and you will have to know this for the AP exam. This has two names. It's called Taylor's Error or Taylor's Theorem. It's also called the Lagrange Error Boundary. We're still looking going to look at the next term, and we're only going to use this if we stop a series with a finite number of terms to approximate the actual value. So we'll still be looking at the next term. So I'm going to tell you what the formula is, and I'll give you a couple examples. So here's our formula. And this is if we stop a series with a finite number of terms, what's the error in our approximation? So we're going to say the error, or the absolute value of the error, is less than or equal to x minus c to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. That's the first part of it. And what this is, this is just the next term in the Taylor series. So it's just the n plus 1 over the n plus 1 factorial. This is the next term, the, the first term you leave off. Then I'm going to have to give you some weird notation here, times this z in absolute value. And z has a special meaning. This means you need to figure out what is the maximum value of the next derivative on your interval from c to x. And that's going to require a little bit of thought. It's very similar to where if I told you what my velocity was and I asked you to approximate where I was going to be later, the source of error in that approximation would be what's the maximum acceleration I can have. So we're going to be appealing to what's the biggest we can make the next derivative on this specific interval, and then we're throwing it into this next term from the Taylor's theorem. Okay, so let's, let's do a specific example of this. And let's just say that I want to approximate um, let's do the sine of 0.2 with the first three terms of the sine expansion. Three terms. Then let's use the Lagrange error bound to give an error statement. And you will be told specifically on the AP test if they want you to use Lagrange error bound. Because if they don't say specifically Lagrange error bound or Taylor's theorem, then you can just use the alternating series error. Use the Lagrange error bound to give an error statement. So here we go. Let's write the first three terms of the sine of x expansion. So we know that the sine of x is approximately equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. So this means that I could approximate the sine of point 2 by using 0.2 minus 0.2 cubed over 3 factorial plus 0.2 to the fifth over 5 factorial. Let's go see what that is. So 0.2 minus parentheses 0.2 cubed. I guess I can come back here and do parentheses here. 0.2 cubed divided by 3 factorial is 6 and then plus 0.2 cubed divided by 5 factorial which is 120. So I've got 0.19873 repeating. 0.19873 repeating. Okay so this is approximately equal to 0.19873 repeating. Now we know that that's not the exact answer for the sine of 0.2, but that's our approximation. So this says use the Lagrange error bound to give an error statement. 
So the Lagrange error bound says that my absolute value of my error is less than or equal to. Go back and look at that again. This, set, this is like the next term, the n plus 1. So I've got x minus c to the n plus 1. Now let's just see. The next term here would have been the 7th, because it would have been to, this, to the 7th power over 7 factorial. And what are we going to use here? Well, what we're going to use here is the x and the c. The c is the center, and the x is where we're trying to approximate it. So this is like 0.2 minus 0 because we're trying to approximate it out to point 0.2 and this is a Maclaurin polynomial centered at 0. So that's the first part of this. Now the next part is times this z value. And this z value is how big can that next derivative get on the interval from 0 to point 0.2. And that's what we have to figure out, our z. So let's talk about the derivatives of sine. The derivatives of sine are either cosine or negative cosine or negative sine. And if you're dealing with sine or cosine, what's the maximum value that either one of those can ever get on any interval? And for sine and cosine, that value is 1. That's the biggest sine or cosine can ever get. So I'm going to just use a 1 here for that. And that's, you can always use that for sine or cosine for that z value, that maximum thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what that is on my calculator. 0.2 to the 7th divided by 7 factorial. So 0.2 to the seventh and then divided by seven factorial. And I don't know what that is right off the top of my head, but I, uh, I'm going to go ask my calculator what it is. Okay, so divided by seven factorial. And then I'm going to have to pause this because I think we've got some people that are coming in here. So let me just do one thing here real quick. Recording pause. All right, we're back live. And I just realized I made a mistake on my calculator, so we're going to go back and fix that here. Um, back when I was typing in 0.2 into my sign expansion, I, uh, I didn't do x to the fifth. On that last term, I did x to the third. So what we're going to do is we're going to get back there. One more. Oh, and Lisa just realized something. All right, here we go. So this should be 0.2 to the fifth right here, because I think that error was a little, I mean, that value is a little bit smaller. Change that to a 5, and then hit Enter. 0.19866933. So let's go back and correct that. 0.19866933. So where was that? Right here. 0.19866933. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so now we go back and we type in what this actual, this error statement, which was 0.2 to the 7th divided by 7 factorial, and that works out to be this value 0 0.00000025396824. So 2.539 times 10 to the negative ninth, which is pretty small. Let's type that in. 2539 times 10 to the negative 9. So let's see if we can expand that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then 2, 5, 3, 9. Let's see if I did that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I did. So that is what we're saying the error is. So in other words, whenever I type in the sign of 0.2 into my calculator, I better get something that is really, really close to this. So let's go see. And as a matter of fact, it can't be more than that away. So we have this boundary. We know that, and since this is absolute value, I guess I could have left it there. That's okay. 0 0.19866933 minus this is my lower bound. And my upper bound will be 0 0.198. 66933 plus that that upper bound is 0.0000000. There's eight of them, aren't there? Now that's a pretty a pretty powerful error statement. Let's go see how how it's looking. Alright, sign of point two. Um, 
better make sure my mode is in it is in radians good so let's see point one nine so let's see how far we are off here one nine eight six six nine three three and so we're correct all the way out to eight decimal places and so what is this a point that two five at the end two five is because from thirty three to zero eight so let's come back here and see yep that that's what it is two five three nine you see how accurate that error statement is that's why it's instead of just saying alternating series error the Taylor series error is way more powerful because it's a lot more accurate and it gives you a very very close error see how tight that error statement was so that there's two things here this approximation was really close and on top of that my error statement really gave me a very close boundary to where the actual value should be okay I want to do one more example which is how uh, the example from the AP exam and what we have here is let me get back there okay I've got this is question 2 from 2004 and I've got a third degree Taylor polynomial that's already been written out for me and I'm gonna go ahead and answer a couple of things here before we go down to D but hold on Lisa needs me so we're gonna to have to pause again <laughs> okay so Lisa's got a sticker and I think she's happy alright so here we go so the Taylor series is already written for us we can see here that it's centered about 2 because I've got x minus 2 here so you know we can we know that this was f of sorry f of 2 plus f prime of 2 times x minus 2 plus f double prime of 2 over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared ah, put the squared up there I don't know if you guys can see that or not and then plus the third derivative at 2 over 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed that's our general form for the third degree Taylor polynomial so the question here is find f of 2 and f double prime of 2 well from our third degree Taylor polynomial formula we would know that f of 2 is the very first term and so that is obviously 7 now f double prime of 2 is not the coefficient of the x minus 2 squared f double prime of 2 divided by 2 factorial works out to be negative 9 so I'm gonna have to solve a little equation here f double prime of 2 divided by 2 worked out to be negative 9 that is the coefficient of the x minus 2 squared so that means that f double prime of 2 just multiply both sides by 2 is negative 18 so that's fairly straightforward and easy uh, part B is there enough information to determine whether f has a critical point in x equals 2 if not explain not well critical point simply means your derivative was 0 or undefined so let's take a look here where is f prime at 2 f prime at 2 is the coefficient of the x minus 2 term and where is that well oh my goodness it's not there we don't have an x minus 2 term which means that f prime of 2 worked out to be 0 so yes it has critical point by Lisa alright if so determine whether f of 2 is a relative max or relative min or neither well since we know it's a critical point we can figure that out from the value of the second derivative and I already know that the value of my second derivative is negative and if your second derivative is negative that means you are concave down and if you are concave down at a critical point then you are at a relative maximum so I would say maximum because f double prime at 2 was negative okay part C is just saying uh, use t of x to find an approximation for f of 0 and is there enough information to to determine whether f has a critical point at 0 blah 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 okay so f of 0 is approximately equal to the Taylor polynomial at 0 so I'm gonna plug 0 in for all of those x's up there and if you plug 0 in for all of those x's it's gonna work out to be negative 5 so that's the first part now the next part is 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 this a critical point well to be a critical point at zero I need to know information about f prime at zero and I don't know that I, I, I know information about f prime at two but I don't know any information about f prime at zero so my answer would be no for that one and here comes the Lagrange error bound here I've got the fourth derivative of f satisfies this inequality so you know what they are giving you here is the maximum value of the fourth derivative so this is like they're giving me z so I know z is 6 
from 0 to 2. Use the Lagrange error bound to approximate on the approximation f of 0 to explain why f of 0 is negative. Okay, so we approximated it to be negative 5. Now we have to give an error statement. So my error statement is, remember, x minus c. So I'm, I centered this at 2, but I'm trying to approximate it at 0. And my next term involves the power of 4, because it's the my next term would be to the fourth power, and then over 4 factorial. So that's the part of that formula that we talked about at the beginning. And then times our z, and our z is 6. And this is an absolute value error. So point 2, sorry, 0 minus 2, that's not a point 2, that is a 2. So 2 to the 4th is 16, 4 factorial is 24, times 6, and then let's see here, do that, that's a 4, that's a 4, alright, so 4. My error statement is 4. So I know that my approximation was negative 5, minus my error is less than I guess or equal to the actual value at 0 and that's less than or equal to my approximation plus my error. So this means that I know that f of 0 is somewhere between negative 9 and negative 1. Therefore I've proven that it's negative. So tomorrow in class I want to really encourage you to try your, it's only like five problems but there you can see it's a little intense and to, if you don't understand this, you need to ask me questions, obviously. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.